Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs. Today with a little update to this Tech 06 battery charge tester, which I quite favoritely tested in a previous video. And the only thing to complain about was that the milliohms measurement of the internal resistance of your battery under test got not the right result. And although this thing had a provision for so-called Kelvin uh, connections, which you can see here, we have a plus and a minus terminal for the current and separate plus and minus terminals for the voltage. The result we got from the milliohms display of the internal resistance was somewhat off by about 50%. So there must be something wrong with the four terminal Kelvin measurement here. So let's first of all recap how Kelvin measurement is usually done, which is also in great detail explained in one of the last videos. And uh, let's get back uh, the drawing I made for the Kelvin measurement of internal resistance of a voltage source. So that was the bad drawing uh, I made last in the last video how you measure internal resistance. Here we have our battery under test with the unknown internal resistance. Then we have our unwanted ohmic resistance of the test leads and the contact resistance, etc. And here would be our I plus and I minus terminals of our battery tester. And the resistor here is the shunt resistor, including the MOSFET, etc. And uh, so hereby the current is measured. So there was nothing to complain about that. And these are the two extra terminals for the voltage measurement, which should go to an instrumentation amp, no matter if it's a dedicated I see with an integrated instrumentation amplifier or if you build one out of either one or three op amps. And the, the output of the instrumentation amplifier gives us the voltage directly at the battery. Now let's get back and trace out uh, how they implemented here the voltage measurement. So this is the component side of the Tech 06. And here we have the current input and we can clearly see the current goes through these two parallel protection diodes. Then here the three pins is the MOSFET and there it goes through these four par parallel shunt resistors down to ground. So there's nothing wrong with the current path. But now take a look here, this is the voltage path for the Kelvin connections for the sense wires. And the negative side is directly connected to ground. And this is a clear indication that there is certainly not an instrumentation amplifier because here the negative pin would have to be isolated from the local ground. And here this is the positive input and this goes to a voltage divider. This one here is a 30k resistor and this is an 8.2k resistor going down to ground. So this is not a true Kelvin measurement or Kelvin connections um, because they just divide the voltage down by a factor of 4.66 to 1 and then it goes directly to the non-inverting input uh, of one of the four op amps here in the LM324 and we have an additional protection Zener diode which is basically unnecessary because the high resistance of the voltage divider protects the input of the op amp itself. So again a, an indication uh, a superfluous component because uh, they don't know that the inputs of the op amp are already protected by the voltage divider. Um, so I've uh, traced this out and uh, made a little drawing and let's see how the so-called Kelvin measurement is realized here and what's wrong with it. So this is how the basic circuitry looks like. 
at the moment it's a little bit complicated, but we'll go through it step by step. So we have here our BUT, our battery under test, with the unknown internal resistance. And then the uppermost and the lowermost trace is the current path. The current goes through an unknown upper resistor, which represents the ohmic resistance of the leads and contact resistance, etc. And it goes here into the I plus terminal, then through the MOSFET, the shunt resistor, I've left out the protection diodes, back to the I minus terminal, which is connected with local ground, back through another unknown ohmic resistance here from the leads, and so there's nothing wrong with the current path. But now comes the voltage path. Here are the two Kelvin connections. They also go through unknown ohmic resistances of the leads. And if you remember, the voltage at our device under test should be tapped off only with high impedance connections. But now comes the problem here the U- terminal is connected to local ground and so we have two paths going to ground and this is not an, a high impedance path. Um, only this, the upper path, that could be uh, described as a kind of high impedance path. Uh, here's the voltage divider and uh, I still haven't drawn in the op amp and that is connected this way. So it's a simple voltage follower or buffer and also the minus terminal is connected to local ground and here we don't get the difference between this and this point uh, we only get a divided down voltage from our upper terminal. And this is not how you can do Kelvin connections with sense wires. So there, that is completely wrong. Or at least the upper path, that would be okay. But here, that is the problem. That we have here unknown resistances which come into play. And we don't measure the voltage here on the upper side, not relative to this point, but relative to the local ground. And that's why we get a not completely wrong, but halfway wrong voltage measurement. And because from this voltage with the load switched off and the load switched on, the microcontroller computes the internal resistance, the result is clearly wrong. If uh, the upper and the lower leads have the same resistance, we would be out by a factor of exactly two, um, which was nearly the result we got when I tested this. Uh, so, but is there a solution to this problem? Is there an easy way how we can transform this circuitry into a true Kelvin measurement? Well, let's see. What we have to add is we have to transform this circuit into a true differential amplifier. And therefore the negative, the inverting input cannot be connected to ground, but uh, it has to be connected uh, via two resistors to the negative terminal of our battery under test. And if you remember from the last video about Kelvin connections, this is how the simplest form of a, an instrumentation amplifier looks like. We have two buffers uh, directly connected to our sense lines, to our Kelvin connections. And I already mentioned in that video, if our resistor under test, in this case our, the internal resistance of our battery, is from its value much lower then our voltage dividers here at our differential amp, then we can leave out the buffer op amps. And if we leave them out, well, the first part already is exactly identical to what we have. 
we just have to make a different connections with two resistors to our negative terminal and to the inverting input of our op amp. So we just have to change how the inverting input is used. Instead of connecting it to ground, we have to connect it via a resistor to our negative terminal, our negative sense terminal, and then add a resistor in the feedback loop. And the only thing we have to watch out for is that the ratio of R1 to R2 is the same as R3 to R4, and then we get a unity gain instrumentation amp. And because this also is used as a unity gain buffer, it should be possible just by replacing the connections to ground with two resistors of either the same value or at least the same ratio as the 30k and the 8.2k to transform this. So I'll try this out if I can do this with the SMD op amp here and see if I get it done and if we get an improvement.